Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Just took a look at Batman the Animated Series on the channel thanks to Nicholas Stevens' recommendation from Patreon. Thank you very much, Nicholas. And I decided to keep going down the Batman Animated Series rabbit hole by watching Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Now, I always thought I had seen this movie back when it originally came out. I remember seeing it playing at a local theater. I clearly remember seeing the marquee, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, and thinking, Oh, that cartoon, it, uh, it got a full-length feature film. That's really cool, because it took me back to the days of when Transformers got their movie in the theaters, and, and other cartoons would make it big with uh, theatrical releases like, well, Care Bears, uh, maybe not the biggest box office hit, but uh, it, it, it was a uh, status symbol to be able to make it to the theaters. So uh, Mask of the Phantasm was originally intended to be a home video release, but I guess the people who watched it, the powers that be, said, this is really good. This should be in theaters, similar to the first Clone Wars movie, getting a theatrical release because it was just too good to just release it on TV. So uh, first time watching this, I always thought I had seen it, but I guess I missed it. Uh, I didn't go to the theater to see it. I think I was just going to wait for it on home video and ended up never renting it, never watching it. So after watching a couple of the Batman animated series episodes and really appreciating the depth, the pace, the writing, the mature stories that really grab me and draw me in. Those, a lot of those episodes feel like novellas, uh, good mysteries. They harken back to the days of Batman being a detective, not just a guy with a lot of gadgets who throws a lot of punches and, and flies a, a bat wing and a bat copter and, and all of this really ridiculous arsenal that uh, he's developed in some of the movies and some of the later TV shows. Uh, I am really, really ecstatic uh, that Batman Mask of the Phantasm was just uh, more of the same. It was more of the TV show. They, they got that theatrical release and they didn't feel the need to do something over the top. Uh, they didn't feel the need to say, well, this is a movie, so we really need to do something that will be cataclysmic, that the reverberations will be felt uh, for the rest of this story arc. They didn't blow Gotham up. Um, they didn't kill off Alfred. Oh, I should say spoilers for those of you who haven't seen Mask of, of the Phantasm. Uh, what I really love about this story is that they didn't bring something new in. They didn't try to reinvent the wheel instead what they did was they told us how they invented this amazing wheel of batman the animated series this movie doesn't to me stand apart from the series it doesn't feel like you know how the star trek movies uh especially the next generation movies you know i enjoy them for what they are but they don't feel like next generation episodes they feel like movies these are movies now. They need to be more exciting, more action-packed. We need to have Picard driving a dune buggy and firing a, a, a laser uh, cannon at people. I love the fact that Mask of the Phantasm doesn't deviate from uh, the animated series episodes. Instead, it's just a long Batman the Animated Series episode. But it doesn't feel like it drags. I actually loved the pace of it. Now, I watched this on a projector on a, on a big screen. Um, the Blu-ray, and it looks really good. I can't say it looked spectacular because there were some shots where it seemed as though often when they cut to a close-up of a person, the picture would go fuzzy. So I think uh, a lot of the long shots look spectacular, especially even projected up on a wall with a projector. But when they're doing those close-ups, I think they were just punching in on the existing artwork that they had. Now you can do that on a small screen and it'll look fantastic. You won't notice the difference. And a lot of people on YouTube actually do it. They shoot their entire review or video uh, from one angle uh, with the camera. And then in post-production and editing, they will enlarge certain segments. So it looks like they zoomed in, but they actually didn't. They're just zooming in on their existing shot. And the original is high enough definition that you don't even really notice it on a TV. But just a word of warning, if you're going to watch this on a, a big screen uh, like I did, uh, blow up an entire wall, that does happen throughout the movie. Those close-ups do look a little soft. 
and I was really excited about super high pristine definition Batman uh, so that's just uh, one tiny little nitpick but getting back to the story I love the fact that they decided with this story instead of bringing something new in a new challenge for Batman to tackle they gave us the origin story that they hadn't given us in the cartoon so this movie came out a year later the uh, TV show debuted in late 1992 this movie was released theatrically on uh, Christmas in 1993 so I love the fact that this show got an entire year's run and then after a year of getting to know this new Bruce Wayne and really falling in love with this character and this world and the situation, this take on Batman, then once we've gotten very comfortable uh, with this entire world, then we're told how this all came to be. I think it's a stroke of brilliance. I get a little bit of origin story fatigue when it comes to superhero stories now, especially ones that have done it multiple times. Like... The new Spider-Man first movie, Homecoming, uh, or even Civil War, I, I was kind of not looking forward to another Spider-Man origin story, and I'm glad that they quickly breezed through that. Um, but I love that Mask of the Phantasm gives me that story I was wondering about. Now, we can fill in the blanks. People who know Batman's history, they're not going to deviate too much. It's it's the traditional Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered and he puts on the bat suit and he's going to strike fear into the hearts of all evildoers everywhere and he has one rule not to kill. But I, I really enjoyed watching how this particular incarnation, because he is one of my favorite Batmen, uh, the animated series Batman voiced by Kevin Conroy. I, I really enjoyed seeing how this guy came together. Um, the first time I watched On Leather Wings, I thought, well, where's the origin story? He's just Batman? Are, are we going to be told how this came to be? And uh, I love how this played out. I'm glad that they waited for the theatrical film uh, to tell this origin story. And even then, they didn't really uh, go into uh, very minute detail. It was more like Marvel's new Spider-Man. They kind of gloss over it, but the important part... Uh, is the new addition that they've added to it. It isn't just about why Bruce Wayne put the suit on and wants to fight evil. Uh, they introduce Andrea, this love interest. And it's not something that I've seen a lot uh, in the movies or, or shows that I've seen with Batman, that Bruce Wayne almost gets to a point where he can heal from the pain of losing his parents. There's a very powerful scene in the cemetery where he's begging his parents for the permission to be happy. And he feels as though uh, they won't let him off the hook, that he has a responsibility to fight evil. And he has to pick between Andrea and the Batman, the Batsuit. What I also really enjoyed about this story is that I could not really predict what was going on here. Um, a character shows up, a mysterious, almost supernatural looking character named the Phantasm who starts picking off these mobsters one at a time. And instead of being an action film, this is a detective story. It's a mystery. And I love watching Batman be the world's greatest detective. I mean, it might look ridiculous to some people who aren't really into Batman. This guy wearing a cape and a cowl and going, hmm, you know, looking at things and inspecting them and thinking. You would think that he's just an action star, and that's kind of what he's been turned into in a lot of the movies. But I just loved every quiet, slow scene where we get to see Batman thinking, brainstorming, trying to intellectually solve this case rather than with his bat gauntlets. And it was quite a while before I guessed who the Phantasm was. Uh, I'm glad to say it was about halfway through the movie where I, I actually thought to myself, hey, Who's the Phantasm? I haven't even stopped to think, like, because usually it's some kind of a twist. It's, you'd never guess it was this person. And about halfway through the movie, I thought, it's Andrea. But they threw in a nice twist there where for a little bit, I thought, oh, no, it's it's her father. And then it turned out being Andrea. So I like the way it was written. Uh, it, the way it comes out is even though I was right, I don't really get that satisfaction of, oh, how predictable, because there was a little bit of a curve there and there isn't so much padding on the back. Ah, I got that right. Cause uh, they did make me doubt myself for, for a couple minutes there. Am I right? Is, can that be Andrea? So that was very well done. And I also love the fact that it's not Bruce who had to pick uh, 
Batman over Andrea, she actually leaves him. So that is, I mean, that's not enjoyable to watch Bruce Wayne be in pain, but um, it's just such an interesting concept to me that instead of just this old childhood pain of losing his parents being the fuel for Batman, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. This is the trauma that shattered Bruce Wayne. So we do see him dressing up just in a regular mask and, and taking on thugs throughout the movie, but it's the heartbreak, this added new heartbreak when his shattered heart was almost pieced back together before the glue could dry, smash. Andrea smashes it again, leaving him. Doesn't explain why really. And that leads to one of my favorite moments in the whole movie, the iconic moment where Bruce Wayne dons the cowl for the first time. And I love Alfred's reaction. It really sells the moment that he's not cool. He doesn't look cool or spooky. Alfred's reaction is aghast. And that is a precursor to how all of the villains are going to react when they see the Batman. So I think it's awesome that they waited until the movie to show us this extremely important scene. It wasn't just given away. I mean, it could have been in a great episode, but movies should be the benchmark for shows that make it to the movie stage. Uh, it makes me think of Transformers where they waited for the movie to show us the Matrix and the opening of the Matrix and the destruction of Unicron. You, you got to do something special in the movie and it doesn't necessarily have to be something like a big explosion, but it, it needs to have something with giant emotional impact. So going to Transformers, I'm glad they waited for the movie to kill Prime off and it wasn't in just a, some episode or a two-parter. And I love all the stuff of the Batman history, the backstory that we were given in Mask of the Phantasm. And I got to mention Mark Hamill as the Joker. He's not the main villain of the movie, but he railroads this movie in a good way. He really steals all the attention, hijacks the film. Uh, I had a big smile on my face the entire time the Joker was on the screen. Mark Hamill really has become my definitive Joker. I'm a huge fan of Heath Ledger's Joker, but that was one movie, a fantastic movie, a fantastic performance. But when I look at everything Mark Hamill has done, all of the fantastic episodes he appeared in, and then all the games uh, and the other movies that are, aren't even connected to Batman the Animated Series, but they still brought Mark back. Uh, I just, uh, I love his body of work as the Joker. I think he perfectly captures um, not just the madness of the Joker uh, and not just the joy, but the cleverness too, the mischievousness. So I'm glad that even though this was a bit of an origin story for Batman and a bit of a love story uh, for him as well, that we also got to see that iconic duel between uh, Batman versus the Joker. Those two are yin and yang, and it's cool that they were able to sneak that into this movie a bit. And I'm not at all bothered that that kind of turned out to, for me, be the uh, the pinnacle, the climax of the movie, even though I think they intended something else to be the emotional climax of the film. So big praise for Batman Mask of the Phantasm. It didn't feel like some execs came in and told the writers, look, this is a movie now. You got to do this, this, and this, and this, this, and this different. You, that stuff works for TV, but not for the movie. I just, I love that this is a long TV episode and it's not drawn out. It doesn't feel like it drags. In fact, it takes the attitude that was put towards the TV show and it takes advantage of uh, the feature film length of it. It takes that slower pace, that introspective attitude, and it spreads it out over a longer uh, runtime, which I think works better for uh, a feature film length than a half hour TV episode. If you've never seen Batman the Animated Series before, the complete Blu-ray set is coming out. There is a DVD set out right now, but the Blu-ray will look so much better. I want to also mention that watching this movie on a big screen uh, projector, I mentioned in the Animated Series video that the show is darker than dark. It's all painted on black backgrounds and, and everything seems dark, even the light parts. I really prefer watching this on a projector. I think it takes advantage of the dark feel of the movie it makes it feel more like the batman movies or if you remember dark city or the crow um it just seems to work better than on a tv where those bright parts are really bright 
Um, so I guess on a projector, the bright parts aren't quite as bright. It's like any movie, basically. Uh, things just feel more uniform. And for such an artistic show uh, and, and the movie, which is exactly like the show, it just seems to work better having that unity all throughout it rather than on a, a TV where the brights are, are actually still kind of bright. Got a thought about Batman Mask of the Phantasm? Scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Nerd mistake.